So we saw in the last lectures how we can quantify algorithmic randomness by using computer programs running on some reference universal theory machine. But one could think that it is always possible to find some language in which a particular object has a short encoding no matter how random. For example, Alice and Bob could agree to compress all the content of the Encyclopedia Britannica in a few symbols. So when Alice presents Bob with those symbols, Bob would know Alice meant the Encyclopedia Britannica. Algorithmic information theory would mean little if the complexity of something could be determined so arbitrarily, by renaming things with any number of symbols. Algorithmic information theory requires, then, that the program to reconstruct the original object has to do so from scratch, so there is no coding cheating. Bob would need a computer program to reconstruct the Encyclopedia Britannica without any external help from Alice or anyone else. It would also look like one would need to specify the specific programming language and the particular universal Turing machine on which those computer programs would run for algorithmic complexity to work or make sense. Otherwise, one would be able to rename things and make anything look random or simple by changing the underlying language and Turing machine. So let's consider the following sequence that has three symbols, 0, 1, and 2. We can show that this sequence can be generated by a small computer program like this one, whose length is no more than 56 bytes, no matter how long the sequence to, to produce the same pattern. However, that is in the world from language running on Mathematica, or the world from desktop. What if instead we had used Lisp, Java, or Visual Basic? It seems that the result would then depend on the computer language chosen. And even in a single computer language, there may be different computer programs of different size that can produce the same object. For example, the following two computer programs can generate any number of digits of the two more sequence, and both are very different in length, even though both are small and generate the same sequence, and even though they are written in the mathematical language. So how to deal with different computer programs in possibly different computer languages with different lengths? Fortunately, the invariance theorem proven by Kolmogorov, Solomonov, and Chaitin, tells us that the difference between any two computer programs producing the same object is at most a constant from each other. More formally, the so-called invariance theorem establishes that the difference of the lengths of the minimal programs on any two computer programs, or computer languages, or even two completely different universal theory machines, is always bounded by a constant constant that depend on the languages or the universal theory machines, but not on the sequence or object S. The way to see this is by thinking in a translator program between two languages L1 and L2, because what the invariance theorem says is that one can always write a third computer program of fixed length capable of translating between any two languages L1 and L2. This is actually very clear with the computer language Java, because one of the innovations of Java, when it was introduced, was that there was a Java virtual machine, or JVM, that made Java multi-platform in the sense that you could run your Java program on any platform without changing any language code. That is because the many JVMs were acting as a translator or officially called a compu compiler. That is between the Java programming language and each machine code for different platforms such as Unix and Windows. So if the translator is shown in blue, as in the screen, one has to only add the translator to every computer program written in some language to convert it into another computer program written in maybe some other language both languages would be producing the same sequence of interest. But we would be able to translate between each other. The length of the compiler, or the length of the blue part, is the same for all input strings, and so it is constant, 
So if L1 is the Wolfram language and L2 is Java, then the invariance theorem tells that finding the shortest computer program to measure the algorithmic complexity of a string is about the same because it is only differing by um, the constant that is the length of the translator program. In another more practical example, what the C in the invariance theorem can characterize in a biological context, for example, is that the DNA and the set of reading and writing chemical machines called ribosomes form a couple of language and compiler able to transcribe and translate DNA into proteins effectively from one language into another. So ribosomes can be thought as some sort of compilers between the DNA, RNA and protein space, with the ribosomes always of the same complexity independent of what they are reading or writing. Now, you may remember that I said that the sequence 102, 102 and so on that we saw before can be reproduced with a code no longer than 56 bytes, no matter how long the sequence with this pattern is produced. Well, that is not entirely accurate. Actually, the code has to grow by a little bit if we want to reproduce longer sequences with the same pattern. It does grow a little bit because one has to determine the end of the algorithm, that is when do we wish the sequence to come to an end. And that number does make the code to grow a little. In fact, classical information theory tells us that we can encode an integer n in about logarithm of n bits. Because remember, we can always guess a number in about logarithm of n yes and no answers or questions. You can see how running this code with very large numbers, the byte count does actually change for very large numbers. So despite how trivial this extremely little piece of information may look and how kind of little difference it makes, it is not only mathematically precise, but it will turn out to be one of the most important little pieces of information in the field of algorithmic information dynamics, and you will see soon why. Not to keep you waiting, but not getting into much details, the main idea is that Unlike a deterministic system that has a well-defined generating mechanism, such as this sequence and its generating formula, other systems that may be subject to some source of randomness or are interacting with other systems, this lo logarithmic change will not be longer be respected, and the more removed from the logarithmic term, the more it will tell you something invaluable about the system's behavior and its underlying causes. To understand this better, in the next unit we will cover the theory of dynamical systems for you to understand what a dynamical system is before we finally get into the subject of algorithmic information dynamics.